Roxo Media House. Hey, Frog fans. Welcome inside the Flying T Club Studio here at Roxo Media House. I'm Caden Parker. And I'm Gabe Miranda with the TCU Baseball Team. Thank you for always supporting Frog Ball, and we look forward to seeing you out at Lupton Field soon. We're excited to host this edition of Frogs Today. In today's show, the TCU football team picks up its first one of the season. Our soccer team takes on the number one ranked team in the country. And what does former Horn Frog and current NBA star Desmond Bang think about this year's basketball team? Plus, our triathlon team competes for the first time in school history. The TCU volleyball team is back at home for three games, and we have a preview of our women's tennis team. Today's show starts after a quick word from one of our sponsors. Stay, Stay tuned. tuned. In Botham, we put people first. So, we simply start by listening to you. Whether you're searching for customized insurance, HR, or financial solutions to protect your home, car, health, business, or employees, our specialists are here to serve you, the people you care about, and your success. Higginbotham. Insurance, HR, and financial services. Inspired by you. Welcome back inside the Flying Tea Club studio. I'm your host, Kevin Parker. The TCU football team is back in the win column after dominating Nickel State last Saturday. The offense put up more than 40 points again, and the defense really stepped up. You'll remember after the Colorado loss, linebacker Johnny Hodges said this. Uh, right now, we're, we're definitely the laughing stock of college football. Having 22 missed tackles, um, having who knows how many missed assignments, making our defensive coordinator look awful, just making his defense look like it's a childhood kid's defense and him getting all this slack. So uh, if it's not a wake-up call, then I don't know what it is. So His teammates heard Johnny loud and clear. They responded by holding Nickel State to just six points. Each week, we kind of just reset the mind and just kind of just prove what we got to do for that week. So obviously, that first game, we felt like defense didn't play, as, didn't play the way we were supposed to play. So week two, we felt like we had to step it up. We didn't do enough to win the game two weeks ago, and you can say that offensively or def defensively. You know, we had the ball last, so we didn't score, so we didn't do enough to win the game. Um, but yeah, it's motivation. You know, we we got to be better in big games and big moments. You know, if we're playing at night again, um, so you know, it is motivation. You know, we, we you know we have to have that chip on our shoulder again. You know, and you know he said it was a wake up call, which it was. You know. It sucks that we had to lose, but it was a good wake up call. And now, you know, that team never wants to, this team never wants to have a taste in their mouth ever again. And we'll do anything to make sure it doesn't happen. Tomorrow, our football team plays on the road for the first time this season. They take on new Big 12 rival Houston. Houston is also 1 and 1 after losing to Rice in overtime last week. Head coach Sonny Dykes spoke about facing the Cougars in his State of the Frogs coaches show earlier this week. Well, good football team. Um, you know, they've played two really hard-fought close games. Um, you know, played a, a game where they beat UTSA, uh, kind of a low-scoring game. Um, you know, and then got into a little bit of a shootout, got off to a bad start last week against Rice and lost in overtime. And, and so they're a good football team. I mean, uh, when you look at the strength of their team, I mean, they got a really good defensive front. Uh, I think they're built strong up front um, on really both lines of scrimmage. I think both their tackles are good players on offense. And and a good football team, you know, as, as you would expect from Houston, they're always going to have good skill position players, you know, three really good receivers, two guys that can really run, and then somebody that works the middle of the field that's a really good route runner and a good athlete as well and can catch the ball and is very productive. Um, you know, a quarterback that's got a lot of uh, experience, you know, started last year at Texas Tech, has transferred over to Houston. You know, we played against him last year. Um, really, really good runner, big, powerful guy that can – can move the pile, um, can get first downs. You know, anytime you face a, a running quarterback like this, it's always a challenge. And then also a good thrower and really throws well on the move. So their offense will pre prevent, uh, present a lot of, you know, difficult things for us. Uh, defensively, uh, again, built up front, um, you know, really a good couple of pass rushers, nine and 10 or two really elite level defensive ends and kind of outside linebacker guys that can move around and pressure the quarterback. and. Um, you know, some experience on the back end, some guys that can cover, some length. Um, you know, just an overall good football team. And again, as you would expect, a really good returners. They've always got uh, speed and guys that can get their hands on the ball and do something with it. Had a long uh, punt return against UTSA. Um, and so, you know, so, some, uh, some guys that have done some good things for them. Right. So conference opener for us, first Big 12 co uh, conference game for Houston ever. So it, hopefully this turns into a, a lovely in-state rivalry for us. It's obviously a natural rivalry once we start playing. Yeah, yeah, you know, it'll, they'll be excited to play. Uh, they really will. I mean, they, they lost a hard-fought game last week against a rival. Um, you know, playing the first Big 12 game at home. Um, 
in their history. So I'm sure it'll be a sold out crowd. I'm sure it'll be loud. I'm sure their players will be excited. It's a great opportunity for these guys to, to get on the map. And, and so we're going to see their best effort. We're going to see an excited team, um, a team that's got their back against the wall and, and a team that's going to come out and play really well. So, you know, our guys understand that. They know what the challenge is going to be and they're looking forward to it. This will be Houston's first Big 12 game, and it's the first time TCU is playing Houston since the 2007 Texas Bowl when Andy Dalton faced Case Keenum. Here's what students on campus are saying. Yeah, so we're going down Friday night. We're going to stay there Friday night, Saturday night, then come back Sunday. Saturday, we're going we gonna to beat the Cougars. That's all there is to it. They're coming off an of L from Rice, but that don't got nothing to do with us. We just came. We're going to come and do our job, do our assignment, alignment and technique, and just beat them. I think it's going to be really great to have some change in the Big 12 to shake things up and see how teams do against each other that maybe haven't played ever um, before. I mean, we saw it with the Horn Frogs getting all the way up to playing Michigan and Georgia, and I think it's really fun to watch teams that have never played against each other go against each other. And I think it'll be really exciting both for us and for Houston to be able to kind of hash it out and see what happens. Please don't forget to join us here on frogstay.com for our pregame show one hour before kickoff. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine-in, catering, or drive through 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. Castain calling for it. It'll go up over the top. Can she bring it down? She tries to turn. Seven, Castain back in her home state, doubles the lead for TCU. Welcome back inside the Flying T Club studio. I'm Gabe Miranda. The TCU soccer team opened up Big 12 play on the road against number one ranked BYU last night. The Frogs had one of the toughest non-conference schedules in all of college soccer, and Coach Bell hoped that it would kickstart a successful conference run. But the ladies tied last night. It's their second tie this season. This team will look to get another win when they host SFA on Sunday afternoon. Meanwhile, the volleyball team is back in action tonight. They're finally playing at home for the first time this season as they host the Fight in the Fort tournament. They play Florida State tonight at 6. The home environment is so, so awesome. Like all the people in Fort Worth, everyone that comes out, it's just so exciting to play in that environment with these girls and just those opportunities to like play for the city, the school, all that. It's been rough on the road. Uh, I think we've endured some tough times, but ready to get back into Shoal and uh, have the fans behind us. We're so excited, so pumped. Um, you know, this is what we've been training for all spring, all summer, um, and even preseason now. So being able to play, um, you know, in our home court with our own fans, like we couldn't be more excited. And congrats to Brianna Green, who made history last weekend when she had a career best 12 blocks. She became one of just eight players in program history to have 12 or more blocks in a game. It was fun, um, especially playing against Texas A&M. I had some family members go there, so. Always good to be some Aggies, but, um, but yeah, no, for me being in my fifth year, like, you know, you feel like a granny sometimes, but getting back to the high stats where I belong, um, it felt great. So I'm ready to continue to make new career highs going on. The volleyball team wraps up the tournament by hosting Western Carolina tomorrow night at six. Switching to hoops now, we're still months away from games that actually count, but our men's basketball team swept the competition during their European trip in August. As we head back to the break, former Horn Frog and Memphis Grizzlies star Desmond Bain tells us what he thinks about this year's team. I love it. I was able to catch a practice, and I, I think that they got a really good team and a chance to be special this year. John's Grill is the newest venture from John Pinnell and the Pinnell's Restaurant Group. A reach to table concept featuring food, beer, and spirits from around the great state of Texas. Our menu is designed by Chef Sean Alvarez and features two chef-inspired burgers, the fatty and the flatty, plus a brisket menu perfect for your casual night out. Fast casual service in a fun, relaxed, family-friendly environment. Featuring 11 big screen TVs for you to catch the big game on. Our mixology team has created a craft cocktail and beer menu featuring local spirits and brews from across Texas. John's Grill, home of the Players Club show each week. 2905 Westbury Street in Fort Worth or online at johnsgrill.com. 
We're lucky to have a collective that's as strong and as powerful as the Flying T Club. It's a big deal for us. It is a game changer. You know, I would just encourage any any fans out there to support it. Everyone asks me, what's the biggest priority? And I say, NIL is big. Please jump on board, show these student athletes how much they mean to you. The thing about NIL is I think there's a right and a wrong way to do it. And the Flying T Clubs do it the right way. Let's keep winning. Join the Flying T Club today. Hi, my name is Maria Coral and I'm in the triathlon team. It is a new team and this is our first year competing. We just had our first competition last weekend and we did pretty good. Uh, we were first overall and personally I was first uh, overall too, so I'm really happy with my result and with all my teammates, we're really happy. I'm from Bogota, Colombia. I always wanted to uh, go outside to do sports and to study. And the United States has like a lot of support uh, for athletes, student athletes. So I saw the opportunity and Jenny gave me the opportunity. So after that, I just came here and I'm achieving my goal and my dream. <laughs> we just have like a really good environment in our team. And it's, overall, I'm really glad and happy to be part of it. We have our first home meet uh, this Sunday. It's in Marine Creek. Uh, that's next to Tarrant County College. Uh, it's called the Bat Battle in the Fort. <laughs> so you ha uh, this is our first race uh, here in Fort Worth. So you can go and watch us and support us there and cheer us up. Um, there's a lot of schools coming. Uh, and we, I know that we're going to do a great job. And if you all are there uh, to support us in our home, like, I know we can do everything. Thanks, Maria. With the addition of our women's triathlon team, TCU now competes in 22 varsity sports. Our women's tennis team is about to start its fall season, and Frogs Today student reporter Ella Gonzalez has more on what to expect. Hey, Frog fans. TCU women's tennis team is about to start their season opener on September 18th. Yeah, well, last year was great uh, winning in IT, but, you know, this year we want to be in the tournament and, and, and make a run there. You know, it was a little, little disappointing being one of the first teams out of the NCAA tournament last year, we felt like we had a really good team that could even maybe challenge and make the Sweet 16. Really this year, uh, we have a pretty experienced team, so a little bit different than past years. We're getting right into the competition. Uh, we're starting competing because we leave for our first tournament here in a, another week. Uh, Battle of the Bay, hosted by San Francisco, Cal Berkeley. Uh, but you've got you know elite teams there. And uh, these are all top five, top 10 programs. And so that's where we want to be. It's hard to be a top 10 team immediately without getting the reps against those types of players. You know, just continuing to elevate our program that we're a conversation for a Big 12 championship. Every tournament in the fall is very difficult. There's a lot of college players obviously wanting to head onto that pro circuit while they're in college and also afterwards. You know, a better for, former world number one in doubles and multiple Grand Slam champions. So, you know, getting those wins under my belt really boosts my confidence and, you know, gives me a lot of confidence going into this season and just seeing athletes at that level, being around them, competing with them, you know, it makes me bring it over here to TCU with these girls on the court here. I mean, us, us girls are out here every single morning, you know, getting up at 6 a.m. Training's really hard, it's brutal, and, you know, doing that together really, you know, forms a bond between us. So you got the on-court stuff that makes us really close to the team because, you know, it's really tough and we go back into the locker room and <laughs> chat about it. And then we're also very good friends off the court, a lot of us. So, yeah, I think it's very important to be connected as a team and overall makes the experience extremely enjoyable. Thanks, Ella, and good luck to our women's tennis team. For everyone behind the scenes here at Rockstar Media House, I'm Gabe Miranda. And I'm Kevin Parker. Thanks for watching this week's show, and thank you for always supporting TCU Athletics. Make sure you like and subscribe to Frogs Today for more great content. Until next week, go, go Frogs! Frogs. Roxo Media House.